we're going to turn it over to Maureen now and dive a little bit about the George, the feast of, well, I call it the feast, but the birthday of George Washington. And what is the significance of this for our country and the whole world? Maureen, welcome. Thank you for joining us. All right. So I've, my family jokes sometimes that I have this thing about George. <laughs> I love George <laughs> Washington. And I, I was thinking, how did I really get into this? I think years ago, I met this woman. Um, her name's Peg Perry, and she um, used to run this special kind of Marion Inn about two hours from here. And she had visited, I had visited there a couple times. We had some meetings there, and she had some writings, copies of his writings. And I remember looking at it, and he, his handwriting was, was amazing. And um, she had some of his prayers, and you just, when you looked at these prayers, you just saw, you know, how the, this this man who became our first president had a lot of depth to him. And that I think that was before I knew about George Washington's alleged vision, or I may have had a copy. I had a, I had a brochure from a long time ago, and I always wanted to put this brochure in writing, especially in our magazine. But I realized I couldn't do that until I had it authenticated. And I remember Peg knew about it. Okay, that was it. She knew about it, but we needed it to be authenticated before we put it in the magazine. So long story short, this woman that I know ended up going down to the archives and she did some research. She's that kind of person. And she was able to authenticate this vision. So I said, that's it, we're gonna, we're gonna do it. Plus some things had happened before I put this in the magazine, something else that happened in 2010, uh, we went down to Mount Vernon, a friend of mine, was in town and she said, let's go to Mount Vernon. And I was wondering, I had heard that George Washington came into the church on his deathbed. So we're walking around Mount Vernon and we were in this one section and this woman apparently did a lot of the research there. And I remember turning to her and I said, have you ever heard anything about George Washington converting to the Catholic faith on his deathbed? She goes, and I was like shocked at what she said. She goes, oh yeah. There's a legend. I said, don't tell me about the legend. The legend is that George Washington was dying and this priest came in a canoe and parked his canoe down at the end of you know, the, the land. And I've been there many times. So I, I, I knew what she, what she was talking about. Came up into the bedroom and gave him he brought him into the church and gave him the last rites. And allegedly, one of the slaves who was with him said, well, he's come into the church, but she, the Catholic church, but she used another term back then, because I think sometimes many of the people back then looked upon, you know, the church in a different light. Although today, some, some people think the same way, but she said, that's, that was one of the legends. So I said, really, that's interesting. She said, yes, they do think he could have come into the Catholic Church. So that began my thinking, I wonder if this is true. And then I had read some more of his writings and his, his talks about the Lord. One of our older magazines, which I can't find right now, we have some of his actual quotes that he said that if any nation fell away from God, we would lose our blessings. There was a whole, I'll probably try to put some of his, his writings together in some upcoming magazine this year if I can. But the George Washington vision is absolutely fabulous. And before I get into it, I'll tell you one more thing. In 2021, May, um, my husband Ted really wanted to visit St. Mary City. And this ties in with George Washington again. And I said, okay, let's go. So we were told to visit the oldest Catholic church in America, St. Ignatius Church that was built in 16, I think it's 1643. And it's up on a high bluff. And so we go to the church and we were told, make sure you ask to see the relic of the true cross. And so we said, okay. So we got up there and um, we asked the gardener, can you get the priest? Because we heard that there's a relic we would like to see. And so they got the priest, he came over. He was sort of surprised we were asking about it, but we heard about it from another woman who knew the details. He went and brought out this beautiful box in the back of the church, the real old section of the church. And he brought this wooden box out and then he opened it up and there was a cross about this big with the relic in it, who was, 
the relic was sent by a queen. I have to get exact information because I should write about this. And she sent it over with the Ark and the Dove, which were the two ships that landed with the Catholic pilgrims in, I think it was 1634, 1633, right around there at St. Clement's Island, which I was able to also visit when I was on this trip to see St. Mary City in Maryland. I didn't even realize there was this huge Catholic pilgrim place. I knew about Plymouth Rock, Massachusetts, because we used to summer up there. I never knew. I'm mean, like, here we are in this, the Catholic faith. And who talks about the Catholic pilgrims? Not many. So I was a little shocked about that. So after that, we walked back at the church and there was a priest talking to all these kids. And so Ted and I were listening and he said, and everyone, let's go outside. We're up, up in the high bluff. He said, see over there, that's Mount Vernon. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, there's Mount Vernon over there. And he said, there is a writing in the archives of the Jesuits books that say that one of the priests left from here to go to visit George Washington, who was dying. And I'm sitting there going, talk about confirmation. And went and brought him into the Catholic Church. Wow. And I'm like, bingo. Thank you, Lord. I mean, talk about, you know, when you want confirmations, he has a way of, of letting you know this. So I thought, oh my God, thank God we got to visit this place. So that was beautiful. So getting back to this George Washington vision of prophecy, which we put in the magazine. And I don't know if you want to share the picture of the angel first, and then I'll talk about it. It's a fascinating vision and prophecy. And I think we're in the third peril right now, which is the last peril. And it's the worst peril. I heard, we heard that George Washington had a devotion to the Blessed Mother. So I'm reading this magazine, oh, I don't know, six months ago. And it was about, I just picked it up somewhere. I think it was at some dentist's office. I can't remember exactly where I was. But in the article, it talked about how they had restored some of the rooms at Mount Vernon and they put, they restored the picture of the Blessed Mother that he had had in his original place. And they had a picture of it in the magazine. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, you know, it's like sometimes God gives you these little gifts all along the way, because that was a confirm that. But there was a vision of prophecy that George Washington had. And I'll just read this part right here. Okay. The father of our country was a man of prayer. As we all know, he went to the thicket many times to pray during the winter his army was at Valley Forge. However, little publicity has been given to the vision and prophecy he received at that time. I'm just going to read this one part and then I'll get right into it. The firsthand account of this vision was given in 1859 by an old soldier named Anthony Sherman, who gave it to a writer, Wesley Bradshaw, who published it. In this vision, God revealed to George Washington that three great perils would come upon the Republic. He was given to know that America was going through the first peril at that time. So that was the Revolutionary War. The darkest period we had, I think, was when Washington, after several reverses, retreated to Valley Forge, where he resolved to pass the winter of 1777. You have doubtless heard the story of Washington's going to the thicket to pray. Well, it was not only true, but he used often to pray in secret for aid and comfort. Comfort, And that's, this has been verified all over. He was a man of prayer. And God brought us safely through the darkest days of tribulation. So one time when he was in prayer, and again, this is in this article, which is, um, if you go to sign.org and, and pick up one of the articles on the homepage, on the right-hand side, it will show you the most popular articles. And this article is consistently in like the top five articles that are the most popular. So it's just, it's gone viral. All right, the first vision, a beautiful woman came and it describes in detail, he was like shocked, this beautiful, you know, being. He knew she was from above, I believe. And I guess later he knew it was a, the Blessed Mother. And she called him son of the Republic. And when I first read that, I remember son of the Republic. Well, really, we were a Republic from the beginning. And later on, quote, we became a democracy, but we were always a Republic at the beginning. So she called him son of the Republic. And then she showed him a vision and you can read it you know, for yourselves when you go online there. And basically she was showing him the revolutionary war, which they were in. 
So many people believe she gave him this vision, this series of visions, because there were three visions. So he would know that things would go okay, because he was very distraught. And um, that's in all the history books. And I had seen a series on TV, one of the, the um, called Turn, and it showed at the time the horrible conditions that they had. And, and I mean, it, it's a miracle that we won, really. God was on our side because in the natural realm, we shouldn't have won. There were so many um, problems that occurred during that time. But she, she showed him that they would get through that first peril. Then she showed him the second peril, which was the Civil War. And because it, she talks about right here, son of the Republic, the end of the century comes, look and learn. And this time the dark shadowy angel turned his face southward from Africa. I saw an ill omened specter approach our land. It flitted slowly and heavily over every town and city of the latter. The inhabitants presently set themselves in battle array against each other. As I continued looking, I saw a bright angel, and this is George Washington speaking, on whose brow rested a crown of light on which was traced the word union. He was bearing the American flag. He placed the flag between the divided nation and said, remember, you are brothers, or you are brethren was the actual word they used. So that second peril was the, the Civil War. The third and most fearful peril, that's the one we're in right now, I think, anyways, that's, that's my little addition. Again, I heard the mysterious voice saying, son of the Republic, look and learn. At this, the dark shadowy angel placed a trumpet to his mouth and blew three distinct blasts. And taking water from the ocean, he sprinkled it upon Europe, Asia, and Africa. Then my eyes held a fearful scene. From each of these continents arose thick black clouds that were soon joined into one. And throughout this mass, there gleamed a dark red light by which I saw hordes of armed men. These men moving with the cloud marched by land, sailed by sea to America, which was an enveloped in this volume of cloud. As my ears listened to the thundering of the cannon, clashing of the swords and the shouts and cries of millions in mortal combat, I heard the mysterious voice saying, son of the Republic, look and learn. And then the voice ceased. Heaven intervenes, now here's the key. He was shown there was a lot of, there was a bunch of countries coming against America. Some people think that's what's been happening to us with what happened with the, the China virus and other things from overseas that, that some nations had turned against us. But the good news is heaven intervened. Instantly, a light as of a thousand suns shone down from above, pierced and broken to fragments, the dark cloud which was over America. At the same moment, the angel upon whose head still shone the word union, who bore the national flag in one hand and a sword in the other, descended from the heavens, attended by legions of white spirits. So that's the angels. These immediately joined the inhabitants of America who I perceived were well nigh overcome, but who immediately taking courage again, closed up their broken ranks and renewed the battle. Amid the fearful noise of the conflicts, I heard the mysterious voice saying, son of the Republic, look and learn. As the voice ceased, the shadowy angel for the last time dipped water from the ocean and sprinkled it upon America. Instantly, the dark cloud rolled back together with the armies it had brought, leaving the inhabitants of the land victorious. Then once more, I beheld the villages, towns, and cities springing up where I had seen them before, while the bright angel planting the azure standard he had brought in the midst of them cried with a loud voice. Now here's the really awesome, I think, wording of this. And then there's an interpretation, which you can read afterwards. I'll sort of summarize it. While the stars remain and the heavens send down dew upon the earth, so long shall the union last. And taking from his brow the crown on which uh, blazoned the word union, he placed it upon the standard while the people kneeling down said, amen. So the interpretation is that there will be three great perils that will come upon the Republic, the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, and the one which many believe we're in right now, because we're, we've been in times of darkness, but there's a lot of great things happening. There's all these prayer movements everywhere. There's 40 days of prayer and fasting. There's 54 day you know, prayer novenas. There's so many groups. We've been doing this work for over 31 years. There's so many prayer groups out there. You can't count them anymore. There's rosary groups everywhere. There's divine mercy cenacles everywhere. 
there are people just speaking up and you know speaking out about things that are happening in their schools i mean there's a lot of good happening and the good news is this particular vision in the end we win it's a, it's a really it just is something that when you start getting down, when you hear about things that are happening in America, there's a battle between Christ and his army, Satan and his army on earth. And Our Lady has said that she will destroy the beast. And she says that one of the things we're fighting is um, Freemasonry. And even our popes have talked about it. There's the encyclical that Pope Leo XIII wrote about, which talks about that. And, and that's, all, that's a whole nother topic. But Bottom line is Our Lady says that she's with us and she is really, you know, she is with us. She will be, she will save America. She has said that Our Lady of America, I think many of you know about Our Lady of America. We did a whole special magazine issue on that uh, last summer and it's very powerful. And I do believe that we are in the midst of the battle right now, but we're coming close and we are going to be victorious. Thank you, Maureen. That is so inspiring.